Mock. Now we're starting with some breaking news involving the University of South Carolina Board of Trustees search for a new school president. Their meeting tomorrow is not going to happen. There's been a legal challenge to the vote with opponents saying the meeting violates state law since trustees were not given enough notice of that meeting. A board of trustee member says they were told about the meeting on Tuesday. Now, a closer look at state law shows that it requires notice of five days to be given before a meeting. So now a judge has issued a restraining order preventing that meeting. One of the trustees says Governor Henry McMaster called for the meeting. The governor this afternoon sent a letter to the trustees and the chairman saying, although I did not call tomorrow's meeting, in my capacity as ex officio chairman of the board of trustees, I respectfully recommend that you consider rescheduling the meeting for the near term. Now, but went on to say both for the convenience of those involved and to eliminate any unnecessary distractions or concerns regarding the timing of special meetings. Well, with that being said, our Lauren Thomas is at the Richland County Courthouse where the judge issued that restraining order. She joins us now live with more on that. Lauren. Yeah, ladies, so we got this order around 420 this afternoon, and this comes from Charles Williams, who asked for a temporary ex uh, restraining order. Now, he is that board of trustee member who did uh, come out and say that enough time was not given, enough notice wasn't given before tomorrow's meeting, and explained that, again, this is not in accordance to South Carolina law and that there needs to be five days before a meeting is held uh, when that notice is given. But in that notice that was received by the board trustees on J uh, July 9th, which was this Tuesday, the board chair explained that the sole agenda item is the election of a new president. Please maintain confidentiality regarding this meeting. A public notice will be distributed later this week. Now, there is also a preliminary injunction hearing that is set uh, July 19th as a result of this order. And in that hearing, they're supposed to, uh, I guess, come forward and, and discuss if this is if this was a legal matter in terms of um, them doing the right thing and holding this meeting uh, not five days prior or after the uh, notice was given to the Board of Trustees. And again, that meeting, that hearing is set for July 19th at 10 a.m. Send things back to you guys. All right, Lauren, thank you so much. You just mentioned USC trustee Charles Williams. He is the trustee who brought that lawsuit. He says he's concerned with the governor's involvement and in trying to force a vote. Yeah, in a phone call earlier with WLTX earlier today, Williams told us that trustees had agreed to start a new search, to use a new search for a forum to look for the candidates. And that came after a meeting that they had in April where the board chose none of those four original finalists. He says the governor getting involved trying to force this vote was inappropriate. Well, I mean, we voted on the process and the governor steps in and demands that we have a meeting to vote on Kasler. And, you know, it's just not right. I mean, the governor shouldn't be involved in this. You know, if there, if there was a crisis going on at the university, then maybe the governor ought to get involved. But everything at the university is fine. And, you know, just to create a crisis, um, I just think it's wrong. Well, in that letter we showed you earlier in the newscast, Governor McMaster asked for Friday's meeting to be postponed and claimed that he never called for the board to meet. A uh, press conference at the State House this afternoon put more criticism on the University of South Carolina Board of Trustees' decision to try and hold a vote for a new president tomorrow. State and local Democrats, including Columbia's own Mayor Steve Benjamin and Richland County Senator Daryl Jackson, criticized this decision. They were joined by university students and some staff members. Mayor Benjamin claims the meeting was actually violating state law. The Board of Trustees meeting scheduled for tomorrow is not only inappropriate, but unlawful. South Carolina state law clearly states in code section 59-117-50 that there must be a notice of time and place of a board meeting delivered to board members no less than five days before the scheduled meeting. This did not occur. I encourage the University of South Carolina Board of Trustees to cancel this meeting tomorrow, to cancel any vote tomorrow, and to restart a transparent search beginning with listening to students, faculty, 
staff and community members along the way. Well, you just heard moments ago from board member Charles Williams as he said he was notified of the meeting on Tuesday. That would be three days before tomorrow's meeting. Our governor, Henry McMaster, sent a letter this afternoon asking again for that meeting to be postponed. All right, let's talk a little more about the gentleman here that was going to be voted on, the background of Robert Caslin. I'm sure many of you are curious. They would have been up for uh, election tomorrow as the new president. He is a retired Army officer, as you saw him there in uniform. He graduated from West Point back in 1975. He went on to serve in Operation Desert Storm and also served in the Iraq War. In 2013, Caslin was chosen as superintendent of the United States Military Academy. Academy at West Point. That's the Army's prestigious college. It's a position that he held for five years before retiring in 2018. Caslin then joined the University of Central Florida, serving as a senior counselor to the school's president and as an interim chief financial officer. The search for a new president started after Harris Pastides announced that he was retiring last fall. As we mentioned earlier, Caslin was one of four finalists announced to take over, or at least to interview to take over. During his visit to the school in April, he made a comment that binge drinking was a big factor in campus sexual assaults. Now, this led some students to protest his nomination. 